quick thank you to the WD-40 company for sponsoring this video. Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. So it looks like we're gonna be able to go full bore and planting corn in the morning. So in preparation of tomorrow, I am going to take the grease gun out and grease the VT. However, I was just greasing the fifth wheel plate on Big Red and I ran out of grease. So I figured what better time to teach you guys how to change the grease in a grease gun if you don't already know how. Uh, because changing the grease in a grease gun is one of the fundamentals of farming. If you work around any kind of heavy machinery, you should know how to grease or change the grease in a grease gun. It's pretty straightforward, but if you've never done it before or haven't done it too many times, um, it can be rather confusing. So I just figured, why not teach you now? So what we're gonna be putting in it is WD-40 Specialist True Multi-Purpose Grease. And uh, I haven't used WD-40 grease yet, but I've heard a lot of positive things about it. So we're gonna try it out for a while. So the first thing you gotta do when you're changing the grease in a grease gun is rotate the container counterclockwise, and that'll loosen it up so you can pull it out. So here we've got the grease gun. The first thing you're gonna start off doing is rotating the canister counterclockwise, and that'll loosen it up, and you can just pull it out. Now, between brands, um, all of this is gonna be roughly the same. There might be some minor differences. Uh, there is a screw on the top side of the grease gun that you are going to use if it is airlocked, but I'll get back to that. Uh, that's fairly important if you replace the grease, but you can't get it to pump anything. So here's the canister. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull out on this lever on the bottom, and what's that it's gonna do? It's gonna pull the crank out so that you can pull out the old can. So there, I just removed the old can. Now we've got our WD-40 Specialist True Multi-Purpose Grease. We are going to pull the lever all the way out and lock it into place. And there's a plastic cap on the grease, on the grease canister. So the side that you wanna always insert first is going to be the side that has the plastic cover on it. So you can see the grease in there. So with the lever pulled out, I am going to insert the canister, and now it should look like this. What you're gonna do, once you have it inserted, is pop the metal tab and pull it out. So there's our grease. Now you're free to insert it into the grease gun and start rotating it clockwise. Now that that's tight in there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna release the lever and push it in. So now, she should be ready to pump grease. But what you'll notice is that it's not pumping anything. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take this little screw tab up here and you're gonna rotate that until it's open and you're gonna get rid of any air that is in the system. Now as I'm pumping this, you're gonna see grease pop out up here. And I just saw an air bubble. You can hear it catching now. It's starting to pump grease. So you're gonna retighten that cap and you're good to go. So that is how you change the grease in a grease gun. We are officially racing rain. Um, I just hopped in the A2, letting it warm up. Um, after our little mishap yesterday, the VT is still running fully functional. Um, just had to disconnect the rolling basket and take that off. Uh, yesterday, we also had an issue with the 4640. Uh, one of the wheels had a gash in it on the front of the tractor. Uh, blew the tire out, uh, scared the living daylights out of Travis, but we jacked the front of the tractor up uh, went and got that replaced, but it was, we got a different tire put on. Um, we got a four ribbed tire put on it instead of a three ribbed, which we think the three ribbed tires do a lot worse, or 
are, are a lot more harmful to the hay. Um, more grass whenever you're driving over it. Always seems like you're ripping it up whenever you're turning on grass. So we got a four rib tire, which is what we've always used to use. And um, right now there's, we got a three rib tire on one side and a four ribbed on the other. Uh, we fully intend on replacing it, but um, that's for another day when we're not racing rain. So here is the forecast. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but it is Wednesday today, partly cloudy today, cloudy tomorrow, and then a 90% chance of thunderstorms on Friday. Uh, I don't know what time it starts on Friday, but that means we're, well, it looks like tomorrow night it's gonna start. So that means today and tomorrow night we gotta really get as much done as freaking possible. Um, especially looking at the extended forecast because this weekend, pretty much gonna rain all weekend. One day of partly cloudy on Monday, 60% chance on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then everything after the 23rd is looking like at least a 50-50 a chance of having thunderstorms. And that takes us all the way out to the 29th. So I believe it is June 1st or maybe like June 3rd or the 5th um, that we can plant, I wanna say it's June 1st, um, is the latest that we can plant and not have it affect our yield. So Rocket wants in, but he's not getting in because he was playing around in the water. So they're here feeding calves. I'm about to get started. Let's get rolling. We're about to start VTing on the farm that I live on, and we're gonna be going through and hitting the chisel plowed ground. Uh, Travis was working last night into this morning, and some of the ground that he ran into was too wet to plant, so they're holding off on planting for a little bit this morning, hoping that things dry out. Um, judging from what I had finished VTing last night at the very end, um, I knew that was a little bit more wet, but I think this should at least go sooner because it is chisel plowed. And I think it's gonna be a little bit drier than what I did last night. That tree was sticking out into the field. It was, until the JCB got a hold of it. <laughs> 